Hello and welcome to this training video where I'm going to demonstrate how to export a RAM frame model into Adena and then from Adena I will perform a seismic analysis. The first thing that I need to do is go to the process menu in RAM frame, click on analyze and on the analyze dialog we can see that we now have an option called generate Adena input file. This is a new feature in version 2023 of RAM. Before we click OK, we need to uh, confirm, make sure that we have at least one load case selected and click OK. We get a message that the input file for Adena has just been generated. We can click OK to close the dialog and then the RAM frame analysis has been completed. Click OK to close the dialog as well and open a new instance in Adena. Go to the file menu, click on open batch, locate the um, Adena input file that we've just created, click on open, and we now have our building structure imported from RAM into Adena. We change the view to uh, something like what we've just seen in, in RAM, and we see that we have um, at each floor of the building structure, we have some rigid links. This is the way we model the rigid diaphragms in Adena, the rigid diaphragms that we had in RAM. So we probably want to switch off the visualization of those rigid links, and now we can see the, uh, the building structure a bit better. The next thing I'm going to do is here from um, analysis options, I'm going to uh, click on that, and switch off the multiple load cases option. This is the default when we import a run frame model into Adena. But in this particular case, we're going to run a seismic analysis in time domain, so we don't need to have multiple load cases. We click OK to close the dialog. There is another small thing that I need to change in this model before I move on with the seismic analysis, which is this loading that came from the run frame model when we imported it into Adena. I will only have a seismic excitation that I'm going to define. I don't want to have any of the loading that, uh, that came from RAM. So I can right click and delete them. Okay, we now go to the analysis type drop down lists and we select the um, implicit dynamics analysis. We then go to the control menu. I'm going to specify some dumping through the analysis assumptions and I'm going to do it by introducing some Rayleigh dumping coefficients. So I have pre-calculated some values that are appropriate for this structure. Then I'm going to define some time steps. So again, control menu, time step. I will have 1500 time steps of 20 milliseconds each. If I save, I can see that the total solution time is 30 seconds. And now I'm going to define from the control menu a time function, which is representative of my um, of the earthquake that I want to apply to the structure. So I already have a time history defined, so I'm going to import it. It's in CSV format in this case. I will click on the file and, and it has been imported here. So if I click on graph, I can see the shape. This is just a scaling factor, this, this shape that we see. So the, the X coordinate, the horizontal axis is, is time, but the vertical one is dimensionless. So this is a scaling factor and I need to go and apply this time function number one to an actual force. So I'm going to define a new load through the uh, apply load option. It's going to be a mass proportional. I need to define a new one. So define and add. The magnitude is going to be one and the direction is going to be the X. I'm interested to apply this earthquake in the X direction. So my vector will be one, zero and zero. So I click save. So what I'm doing here is effectively to assign a force, which is 
it's proportional to the mass that we have on the structure with a magnitude of 1. So we are effectively multiplying the mass on the structure by 1 by the fine history that we have imported a moment ago. So that's the earthquake excitation that we are going to apply to the structure. We are now ready to solve the analysis. We could do this through the solution menu, data file run, but I'm going to use the, the shortcut on here. We make sure that the run solution option is switched on. We click on save and um, adding a structure starts solving the, the dynamic analysis. Okay, the analysis is now complete. We didn't show all the solution time steps, but we fast forwarded a bit. We can see that those 1500 time steps took just under two and a half minutes to, to complete. So now we can close all dialogues, switch to the post-processing interface, and um, open our results files. As usual, we can do this from the um, file menu, open, we choose the porthole file that has just been generated. And this is our, um, our structure. I'm going to switch off the rich links again. I'm going to modify the mesh plot to apply a magnification factor to the deformed shape so we can appreciate this better. I'm going to go to the first solution time step. And if we start skipping or running time steps here, we see how the, the structure is reacting to the, to the earthquake excitation. We can appreciate the deformed shape. We may also want to look at displacement sign histories on different stories, on different floors. So I'm going to switch on the visualization of the nodes. I'm going to go to the definitions menu, model point, select node, and I'm going to start adding nodes. So let's call the first one story one, and we pick a node from the first floor. We add a story two, a second node, we add story three, and we pick a node from, from the first floor somewhere here. And finally, story four, pick, and we select one node, for instance, here. I'm going to clear the screen and then go to the graph menu, response curve, model point. I'm happy to have the um, time variable on the x coordinate. And let's look at the x displacement, which is, for instance, the, the direction in which we are exciting the structure. We click apply, we have a first time history, and then we can go story two. I want the plot name to be, well, I want the previous plot. So we have the graphs overlapping on the same. Apply, uh, story three, and apply, and story four, and apply. Cancel this, and this is how the, this is the displacement time histories at uh, different floors of the structures. Usually, we may also be interested to have these displacement sign histories in a numerical format. So we can go to list, value list, model point. Let's imagine that we want um, X, Y, and Z displacements. And let's pick, for instance, a story four and apply. So here we have our displacement sign histories across all time steps. And we could also export this table. For instance, we have it, we have it now in, in a cells format, which is easier to copy and paste. But we can also export this table, uh, for instance, onto a CSV or a text file format. This concludes this training video. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.